All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna fix a couple errors here. So first, we're gonna make sure that our uh, enemy is respecting our colliders, because the way we had it last time, our enemy wasn't respecting these colliders very much. And second, if we're just kind of hanging out next to our enemy and we strike them, we're gonna make sure that it still registers that hit and doesn't go to sleep. So let's dive in. All right, so here's where we left off. Uh, we have our player that can walk around the world. Our enemy will chase, and there's a few issues here that we need to fix. First of all, if I attack right now, nothing's going to happen. But if I go back and attack, then something will happen. And there's an issue that's causing that that we'll talk about here in just a minute. And the other big issue is uh, if I were to walk around a, an object that should stop the enemy, the enemy's going to walk right through it, which is an issue. So let's dive right in and get all this fixed. The first thing I want to talk about today is the rigid body 2D. So right now, in general, there's three different kinds of rigid body 2D. There's dynamic, kinematic, and static. So let's talk about each of these in uh, general. So the dynamic rigid body 2D is going to be moved by the physics system. And in general, whenever you have a dynamic rigid body 2D, you want it to be, mov you want it to be moving either using uh, move position or using forces that are applied to it through the physics system. Uh, our player right now is a dynamic rigid body because in order to move it, we're using move position. Our log, the way I currently had it, was kinematic, and then when we hit it, it turns dynamic for the physics to be applied to it, and then it turns back to being uh, kinematic. And the reason I was doing that is... Okay, I don't want that right now. <laughs> the reason I was doing that is the way that I was moving, or the way that I we currently are moving the log, is by directly setting the transformed out position, and you don't want to do that with really anything with a rigid body, so we're going to need to fix that. Uh, so that's the dynamic rigid body. A kinematic rigid body is one that has a rigid body for physics purposes for other objects. However, the physics simulation doesn't move it. You're essentially telling Unity, treat this like it's a rigid body. However, I'll handle all the motion through code. Um, which is why you can decide whether it's simulated or not. Um, this full kinematic collisions can uh, tell whether or not you want it to interact with other kinematic objects. Uh, and then the third type is static. A static rigid, rigid body essentially just sits in one place in the world and doesn't move. So those three types we've got here. Uh, dynamic, where its movement is handled by the physics system. Kinematic where it's part of the physics system, but movement is handled by code, and then static, where it doesn't move at all. Um, I haven't been able to read a good argument for why you would use a static rigid body versus just having it be a game object with a collider on it. Because a game object with a collider on it will still act with the physics system, um, but won't be moved at all. So if any of you know a good reason for that, maybe leave a comment down below. So let's talk about the rest of this here. So simulated, use auto mass. So if it's a dynamic object, Unity will calculate how much mass it should have based on the size of the collider. If I turn that on, you'll see that the mass turns to less than what it was. I'll turn it back off and just set my mass to one. We're not gonna, not 10, come on now. Uh, we're not gonna be using the mass property at all. So it's gonna be totally fine. Linear drag is how much drag it should have moving in a straight line. An angular drag is how much drag it should have as far as its rotation goes. Gravity scale is how much gravity is going to affect this. You can make this negative to make something fall up if you wanted to play around with gravity. Collision detection. This one uh, often becomes an issue with a lot of people. So you want your collision, and in our case, collision detection is totally fine to be discrete, but if an object is traveling very, very fast, then and you're noticing that your object is going through things that should be walls, maybe the first thing you want to check is changing it from discrete to continuous. And the reason why is if it's discrete, it's only going to check for a collision with another object on every physics tick, 
which is roughly 30 times per second. Whereas if it's continuous, it's going to check for a collision on every frame, which most of the time is significantly more than 30 times per second. Uh, the sleeping mode, we're, we'll address this in a minute. Um, so there's three options. There's start awake, start asleep, and never sleep. Um, let me show you how that affects things here. I'm going to pull my scene down so that I can look at both my scene and my game at the same time. So if you'll notice on my log, I have this green line here to represent the collider. So I'm going to press play, and you'll notice something that happens. So the collider went from being bright green to this kind of faded green. Now when I move my player into range so that it starts moving again, the collider turned bright green, and then as soon as it stopped, it went to faded green. It's now asleep, which means that it's not going to register any uh, physics on it. So like if I try to swipe at it, even though the player's hitbox is overlapping it, so just to show you, I'll turn on the right hitbox. So you can see that that hitbox is, I'll zoom in even further, you can see that that hitbox is being generated and it is overlapping the logs collider, but nothing's happening, and that's because the log's currently asleep. Uh, if I move my player outside of the logs area, the log wakes back up, then I can hit it and it'll actually work the way it's supposed to. So we'll address that in a minute. Um, and then uh, interpolate is whether you want it to be making smooth motion in between the frames, or smooth motion based on an anticipation of what the next frame is. For us, we can leave this at none. But if your motion is appearing jerky, there's two ways that you can fix it, and this is one of them. Um, you can interpolate, meaning you're going to make smooth motion in between frames, or extrapolate to make smooth motion based on approximation of where it's going to go next. Um, freeze position freezes the position on X or Y. So maybe you have something like a, uh, I don't know, a a paddle in Pong or Breakout, and you don't want it to be moving on the y-axis at all, you can freeze its y position, which means that no matter how much force it's given to it, it will stay at the same y position. Same is true in the opposite, you can freeze the x position. Uh, freezing rotation is just on the z-axis, because in two dimensions, the only rotation that you would be able to notice is along the z-axis. Rotation on x and rotation on y, you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice. Um, Okay, cool. So that's a quick description here. So in order to fix my two issues that I have with my log, first I want to change it to dynamic, and I want to turn my sleep mode to never sleep. Then, oops, no, I do want to simulate it. Then I'm going to open up my log script here. So in my log script, I want to do a couple things differently. So since I'm using a dynamic rigid body, which means I'm using the physics system, I don't want to be directly setting the transform.position because the physics system wants to do that. And if I'm trying to override the physics system, things are going to get bad. So instead of doing this, I'm going to first make a reference to the rigid body up here. So um, I'm going to make this private. And it's a rigid body 2D. And I'm just going to call it my rigid body. And then in my start method, I'm going to complete this reference. I'm going to say my rigid body is equal to get component. And the component I want to get is a rigid body 2D. And there we go. So I now have a reference to the rigid body. Now, down here in my check distance, instead of directly setting my transform.position, I'm going to create a temporary vector 3. So I'm going to say vector 3 temp. And set that equal to the move towards. And uh, I'm going to use the rigid body and move position, just like we're doing with the player. In the player, we're using uh, rigid body dot move position. So we're going to say my rigid body dot move position, and we want to pass in temp as the argument for where we're moving to. Now this is going to affect the knockback script because in the knockback script we are changing it from kinematic to dynamic, and now we're keeping it dynamic all the time. So if we go to the knockback script here, I want to remove this line that changes the enemy body type to dynamic, because it already is dynamic. Um, adding force, and then I can get rid of all of this coroutine stuff, and tell me 
I might not have done this in the last episode. I'm trying to get better about making changes to the actual script only on camera, so apologies if I didn't do that this time. Uh, and then the other thing I want to do is get rid of the body type. So um, I want to make sure that the body type is going to stay dynamic, so I don't need to be changing the body type at all. So I'm going to save that. Let's go back in Unity here. Uh, let that compile for a second. And then we'll hit play and test this out. So it's thinking. Doo -doo. Cool. All right, so first of all, I have my, I have the body set to never sleep. So I should be able to go right up next to it and you see how it's still bright green. So if I attack it now, that still affects it. Uh, now if I also go up above the rock here, you can see he's trying to come get me but he's unable to. Um, and then here, trying to come get me, unable to, and there we go. So um, there's a quick little description of how the rigid body 2D physics system works. Um, I'm gonna change one thing really, really quickly here. I'm gonna make my attack radius something significantly smaller, like 1.2. There we go, it's nice and close. Uh, and then next time we're gonna talk about uh, hit boxes and hurt boxes. So right now, it only registers a hit if we hit this little teeny tiny thing here. This is what we want to use for collision though, which means we want to use a different box to detect a hit because we want it to more accurately reflect the size of the enemy on screen. And so we'll use a different box for detecting hits. Right now we're just using this one, but that's fine for now. Um, and then we'll also talk about state machines. Uh, we'll probably talk about the state machine before we talk about the hitboxes. And um, then I'll do like a, a little addendum to talk a little more about the animation system just to make that working. So I feel it's best to get the actual feel of the game working best. I'm just, I just think it's fun to hit this dude. <laughs> um, I feel it's best to get the actual physics of the game working first and then worry about animation or what's being shown on top later. So. All right, um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. Uh, you can join my Discord, where these two problems were brought up to me by members of my Discord. Shout out to Richard and I think Gabe Payne. Um, yeah, I'm chatting pretty much every day on the Discord, so if you want to get a hold of me, that's honestly the best way. Uh, otherwise, I hope everybody out there is having themselves a wonderful day.